Hi folks, I just wanted to do a real quick video on this, um, the IntelliTech Electronic Climate Control Unit. This is primarily used for RVs to uh, control multiple AC units and multiple heater units that might exist across a very large uh, recreational vehicle. Uh, my neighbor has uh, an older one, I think it's a Fleetwood from 1998 and it has this system controlling the uh, the ACs and the heaters. It's a lot more complicated than you might initially expect uh, because not only does it have you know controlling both heat and cool across the two separate units it is actually designed to shed power. Um, because it's an RV you might go into a campsite and you'll probably only have something like 30 amp service into the RV if you have two ACs running and someone runs the microwave, for instance, bam, it'll pop that breaker. Too much power. So this guy's designed to monitor the current going into your RV through a current sense uh, coil. And if it's drawing too much current, it'll start cutting back on the cooling levels. So it'll start turning off the AC compressors one at a time and start ratcheting back the fan speeds in order to reduce your electrical load uh, so you don't end up popping that main breaker. Um, unfortunately for him, he ran into an issue where he discovered the heat was on even though the system was in an off state. So one day he goes outside and realizes in the middle of summer the heater is on, the rear heater and uh, opens the door and discovers it's 90 degrees inside the RV. Not what it should be doing. Um, these systems are hard to come by since they're really only on RVs and information about them is pretty thin. They do have a service manual available for it but it really only covers higher level conceptual stuff. This is about as much of a wiring diagram as you get so it only really covers basic connections between the different components across the entire RV. Nothing about the actual circuitry. Uh, so, in particular, what we have here is the wall mount thermostat. This guy, he is part number 00-00597-000. And the electronic climate control energy management unit master controller. Um, part number 00 dash zero zero five nine one dash zero 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 uh, this is kind of a two-part system and it's a little bit unusual because there's really only two wires between this thermostat control unit and the master controller and as you can see there's quite a lot of options for the two a for the heat and the AC and plus the temperature settings plus there's two LEDs on here so what they ended up doing is a multiplex bus between the two units. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this, but I think what they're doing is using uh, a rather standard off-the-shelf 1980s technology binary uh, decimal counter. And they cycle the counter in order to determine what position each switch is in. Um, the thermostat itself gets uh, thermocouples or thermal resistors really that are located in two spots in the cabin. I don't have those with me so I got replacements and um, they make a judgment depending on the position of the switches whether either to call for heat or call for cool um, but what they call for is uh, communicated over that multiplex bus. So um, what I came I, I managed to get this all set up and I was actually able to replicate this exact issue. When you put the system into both modes, both front and rear to off, uh, occasionally you would start to hear a relay start to chatter and you could see on the bus that uh, a pin, that a signal was high. It really was trying to call for heat even though the system's off, no matter what you did with the temperature sliders, it didn't do anything. Um, lights were not on, but it still was calling for heat. So inside this guy is uh, this uh, relay 
there's actually two relays in one package and they call for heat across the front and rear heaters uh, they just simply short the connections um, so when this was in a funky state you could definitely hear this relay just chattering on and off sometimes it would quiet down but the bus would still show something was active interesting okay so start digging into this thing and you start to realize there's actually not a whole lot going on here in here so I know this system ugh, let me get these boards apart I know this system was built in probably the 90s but I got a feeling this design as well from the 80s so I'm gonna pause a bit and actually take these boards apart before I start to break something hold on all right that face plate's a little bit difficult to get off but anyways so when you slide this position into heat uh, green light comes on and if you heard it the relay actually kicks on uh, I think this is the rear one and this is the front um, so it just shorts contacts out and of course depending on your position of your thermostat here you get it too high relay cuts out or I'm sorry too low relay will kick on too high and the relay kicks off so you actually can see this in the multiplex bus so let me give you a different perspective up here to the oscilloscope so this is in the heat position with thermostat set to really high, like 90 degrees. And when I drag the thermostat down, it kicks off. So it's kind of interesting it does that. And it actually has that signal code back and forth like that. So pretty cool. Uh, this is other position. Need to see. Um, and as you cycle through the various cooling fan speeds, uh, the bus changes depending on what's going on. I didn't bother trying to decode what exact each position is or even really what the cycle rate was. Um, kind of interesting. I can't find a clock signal in here. Uh, I didn't actually... I just couldn't find what they're using for a clock. There's no crystal. Uh, so they must be using some combinational logic and the delays of the logic chips in order to determine that clock signal because if you look through this thing all this technology is through hole uh, discrete chips this entire thermostat only has uh, a couple op amps it has some analog comparators and then there's a bunch of and and or gates discrete gates with uh, a couple transistors here and there uh, that's it and that's really about all the same over here uh, obviously more it's only single-sided load uh, dual-sided boards so if you're somebody's really dedicated they could probably pretty quickly figure out the circuit schematic for this but anyways I was really only interested in the fact that with the system off it was still calling for heat uh, why in the world would it be doing that so let me power this down safely um, what I did notice is when you turn the system on, there was a brief amount of time, five, maybe 10 seconds before it would get into this bad glitchy state and it would start calling for rare heat. So there was a period of time that it wouldn't, it would be acting normally. And, uh, what I actually found is if you power cycle it again, that amount of time is less like a second or maybe even less so it started to dawn on me it's starting to feel like a little bit of temperature dependent on the components you could feel everything nothing was shorted out there's no obvious burn marks or things exploded there's no chips that are getting warm and all these things these discrete 4000 series logic chips are nearly bomb proof same with the op amps and and comparators uh, and the rest of it says some resistors. There are tantalum capacitors here and there, so you never know. Those could go funky, but without reverse engineering, you would have to track it all down. What I did discover, though, is if you pull the boards apart, uh, what I discovered was there were, there were about, I think, two connectors. There's like an LED here and a couple connections on here 
that had some residual solder flux on it. Now, the way this is manufactured, it would have gone through like a pick and place machine and then had a wave solder come underneath it in order to solder all of these connections. Uh, these board to board interconnects, these one, uh, 0 0.1 inch header uh, would have, are, were done by hand um, and they had residual solder flux still on there from the hand soldering process but then I also noticed like there's an LED over here that had some solder flux on it but nothing else and then there's like two or three connections over here that had some solder flux on it but nothing else then I started looking at the the quality of the solder joints and I realized somebody must have screwed up the settings on the wave solder machine because there was definitely not enough solder on several of these joints most of them were good, but there was definitely some that were really thin, and I suspect that's exactly what they discovered when they manufactured this board. There's a couple connections that are a little bit funky, and it wasn't working right, so they went back and touched those connectors, connections up by hand, but they didn't do the whole thing, just the parts that were actually causing it to fail. So, with uh, nothing obvious, I decided I'm just going to go through and resolder every single connection on this board and this board and all the crap that's on this board uh, almost an hour I think I have my daily dosage of lead now but it's odd that it's now actually behaving it does work the way it was originally designed so one of these solder joints in here who knows which um, was spotty. I've seen this before. Uh, I fixed several TVs like this before. Um, solder joint looks good, uh, but at the microscopic level, it's cracked. There's a small separation between where it's connecting the via and the component. And uh, you'll probably never be able to see that unless you go under a microscope. And that kind of stuff can be very thermal dependent because if it's making connection, it's drawing a little bit of current, then it's heating, and then all of a sudden as it heats up, it moves because metal expands when it heats, and then it separates and doesn't make a connection anymore. And you can't see it. It's too small to see. Um, so, anyways, there's not much information online about these things, and I've seen forum posts about people complaining about their thermostats going crazy or suddenly deciding to turn on the heat when they shouldn't uh, so I decided to put together this little video um, to try and help other people with this system if you got one of these things go through and just resolder all your solder joints I bet it will work after that the rest of this design is very straightforward and relatively bomb proof unless you got something that really catastrophically went bad uh, I would suspect this this system would last quite a long time. Um, obviously, modern systems, you just have one microcontroller and about four discrete components. <laughs> it would not be this complicated. But with these discrete components, the advantage you get is uh, quite tolerant to uh, interesting uh, situations. Except for solder joints in a situation that's vibrating like a large vehicle going down the road um, so that's all it probably takes check your solder joints